Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Biz Bites, proudly brought to you by Com Together, the people behind podcasts done for you, because we're all about exposing other people's brilliance. Don't forget to subscribe to Biz Bites and check out podcasts done for you as well in the show notes. Now, let's get into it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Biz Bites. And today we're going to talk about the whole idea of being known as an expert in your field. Now, the reason we're doing that in this particular episode is because that's what we have been doing in Biz Bites since it began. We've been interviewing, or I've been interviewing, I should say, experts in their field. And what I'm seeing is a bit of a misnomer out there about whether you should be the interviewer and how you should position yourself so you too are the expert in your field, like many of the people that I've spoken to. So we've got a few points that we're going to go through today, and I hope that that will be of some value to you as you plan to be the expert yourself in your field, as I know you are. The reason you're watching this is because you know you're an expert in what you do, you know you have something special to offer. The question is, why don't more people know about it? Well, hopefully you'll get some tips out of today's podcast that will put you a step forward into the future. And if you are that expert, remember, you can always reach out to me on BizBytes and maybe we can interview you in future episodes. Indeed, go a step further. Why not have your own podcast? In which case, contact me about podcast done for you Links are in the show notes to tell you more about that. But let's get into the podcast and really focus on the whole idea of being known as the expert. So there are quite a few things that you need to think about. And uh, I think one of the important things to start off with is the whole idea of the value of being known as the expert in the first place. Why do it? Well, It's about credibility building. That is first and foremost, one of the keys to why you want to be known as an expert is because it elevates your credibility. Now, there are lots of ways to be known for this. Of course, there are internally, people within your business might know it. Indeed, some of your clients may know it, but that isn't always necessarily the case. I've been uh, approached and had conversations with many people who have found themselves within a business, even in a senior level of authority, but people have not appreciated the full level of their expertise and credibility. So you need to build that story and you need to build that with all of the audiences who should know about it. Credibility is an important part of success in business. At the end of the day, this whole idea of like, know, and trust is important in our decision making process. So if you want to build that with people, you have to build a sense of credibility so people will trust you to move forward. Now, you can wait until you have a relationship with someone to try and build in that credibility, or you can get in front of it. And I think that's one of the keys that I wanted to mention to you is is getting in front of it. The more people that learn about who you are and what you're about, the better off you are. That is what credibility building is about. Now, I do respect the fact that some people are a little bit shy when it comes to this. Am I better than the next person? Well, the answer to that is in my second point, which is about you have a unique perspective. You have your own unique experiences. No matter who you've learned from, no matter who you might regard as your mentors or indeed the people that you've uh, studied at some point or another or watched and listened to their podcasts, for example, You have your own perspective on things based on your experiences and how your life and the things that have happened around you have impacted and indeed made you think in a particular way about certain bits of information that you can then impart to your clients, whether that is, you know, in an end product or service or whether it's in the way that those things are produced in the first place. That unique perspective is a really important thing to hold on to. Because it is what differentiates you from the next person. And there is a uniqueness that you can then go and create and own that space. And I think that's a really important thing too. Don't be afraid to put your own spin on things that you've learned because that shows that you understand 
and have developed the ideas further to suit your particular audience. Hey, we hope you're enjoying listening to the BizBytes podcast. Have you ever thought about having your own podcast, one for your business, where your brilliance is exposed to the rest of the world? Well, come talk to us at Podcast Done For You. That's what we're all about. We even offer a service where I'll anchor the program for you. So all you have to do is show up for a conversation. But don't worry about that. We will do everything to design a program that suits you from the strategy right through to publishing and of course helping you share it so come talk to us podcast done for you.com.au details in the show notes below now back to biz bites it's not just doing it for the sake of doing it but it's doing it with your spin on why you are different and the extra value that you can add you don't always have to agree a hundred percent with the person that you've been learning from whether you know them or not you're allowed to make your own adjustments because of your own experiences. That's what we all do, I think, in business and in leadership of businesses. So that is a really important part of that second component. Now, I want to come to a really important part as well is that once you have built those levels of credibility, that where it allows you to do is also to cast your eye onto the future. Because generally speaking, when you're talking about building your credibility, initially, it's about what you have done. It's your perspective on what's happened in the past. But the real value comes when you can give a perspective on what is happening now and what may happen in the future, how you are positioning yourself as the trusted advisor for the businesses in your key audiences. I think that is a really important reason why you would build your credibility and ultimately how you get known for your expertise. Because if you are not afraid to put your opinion out there because you've done those other steps first, then people are going to come towards you and particularly want to engage with you. Now, they don't, again, necessarily have to 100% agree with your perspective on where things might go. I'm not necessarily saying you have to be controversial. I'm not saying that you're going to be 100% right all of the time, but you're allowed to have an opinion and you're allowed to adjust and adapt that opinion as time goes on and uh, and talk to your audience about those learnings because that is showing development and changing again we no one can predict accurately 100% the future otherwise we'd all be geniuses wouldn't we but the fact of the matter is we can have an opinion on it if you have that credibility that's built in beforehand it allows you to start exploring new relationships with clients as they start planning strategically for where things are going because you want them to be one step ahead of the game. And that is a big component of what you need to do. Now, the other thing too is that part of all of this is that yes, you need to keep learning along the way and you need to keep adapting with what is happening in the community. And we're living in a very fast changing world at the moment. I think, you know, it was only two or three years ago that if you'd have said AI would dominate the headlines, probably most people wouldn't have paid much attention. They would have thought it was still relatively science fiction. Yet you can barely have a business conversation today without mentioning AI in some way, shape or form. So we all have to move and cope with the times, which means you still want to be the expert that is allowed to have an opinion on those things and allowed to adapt, as I say, according to the changes that are happening and the new things that you're learning along the way taking your old learnings, taking your credibility and moving it forward to position you in front of the next, in front of the next big thing. You know, you want to take it all to the next level with your own spin. That's what I was saying before. That is a really important part of it. Take your, take your learnings, put your spin on it, put it out there so that people know about you, know about your opinions and want to gravitate towards you for any number of different things. It could be about being a client. It could be about a collaboration. It could be about something new, about co-creating something completely, completely new that hadn't been open to you before. I would say as well that one of the things that the mistakes that people make in building their credibility and what they're known for is that they focus just on the end product or service. Yet along the way, there are lots of learnings that you have, be it in as a leader of people, be it in managing a system or developing a system, be it in developing technology to support the end product or service, 
be it about relationship building or networking. There are, you know, you can go on to sales and marketing areas as well. There are many things that you can suddenly become known for as an expert as a result of the core product or service that you're offering. So don't feel as though you are necessarily restricted to just talking about that one thing. One set of credibility can lead to you building other areas and indeed creating new opportunities for you and for your business as you go along the way. Now, I think it's really important uh, as part of all of this is to continue to be in a conversation with your audience. Credibility is doesn't come from simply going and telling people what they have to do. It comes from listening, understanding, responding, and developing alongside of them. If you want to be known as an expert, you need to show an ability to adapt, to adapt. And I think even more so in this current environment, that in spite of the fact that there's a lot of AI and things that want to just put you in a bit of a pigeonhole, the reality is we're all human beings and we want to respond to an individual set of circumstances. And you, as the expert, are best positioned to be able to correlate all of that information, or collate, I should say, all of that information that you've been getting over the years and learning from different places and adapt it to suit your particular client's needs. That is how you get known even more so in your space because you're able to adapt the information to suit individuals. That is how you get known as an expert. But indeed, one of the uh, important things about all of this is you need to share it with your audience. It's why I'm here, why I love podcasting so much because you get that opportunity. Now, I do want to say that along the way, I have been interviewing experts in and uh, it's part of the podcast series of Biz Bites, which I hope you've been enjoying. And people ask me, well, hang on, how am I still the expert if I am doing the interviewing? Now, I want to backtrack here a little bit and say this is one of the problems with a lot of podcasts, that many people are doing podcasts for, for the purpose of building their own credibility, which is absolutely spot on. But by becoming the interviewer, they end up just building the credibility of the people that they have as a guest on the program. Now, I'm a little bit different in that my whole thing is that I'm selling the ability to be able to be the interviewer. That is what we are all about here. You know, we, we are putting podcasts together for other people as well. That's why I have my own podcast. So it allows me to demonstrate those skills, but it also allows me to talk to my audience in a way that, you know, makes me an expert in what I do and being able to bring the best out of the experts that come onto the program so I can share it with you as an audience. And in turn, you may want to turn around and either you're going to learn from that or you're going to turn around and say, hey, why don't we do a podcast together as well? So what I'm doing as an interviewer is a little bit different to what the majority of people need to be doing because at the end of the day, the service they're selling is almost never what I'm selling. And so that's totally, that's something to keep in mind as you're listening into this and you're listening into future episodes of the podcasts uh, that I do, both in BizBytes and those that I do from many, many clients as well. Because think about where you want to be positioned. It is a difficult situation about being an interviewer as well. Now, I've had many years' experience of doing it. It's what I studied over 30 years ago at university and I've worked in the media and I've worked extensively in marketing and communications for a long period of time to be able to develop the skill set. And it is a fine line to balance between me sometimes wanting to be a marketing expert, perhaps in a certain situation of an interview at the same time as being the interviewer and keeping the conversation moving. It is a very difficult line to tread and not one that many people can do very easily because it's not natural. I've been doing it for a long time. So it comes a little bit more naturally to me to be able to do it. I'm not saying it's impossible. What I'm saying is it's challenging. More often than not, if you listen to a podcast where someone is interviewing somebody else, think about the person doing the interview. Are they the expert? Don't think about it in terms of celebrity interviews because that's a whole different ball game again. I'm talking about specifically about business podcasts. Do you think that sometimes when they're having someone on the show as a guest, that they suddenly lose their own credibility? And that's the important part of what I wanted to talk to you about today, about being known as an expert. Make sure you don't put yourself in a situation where you potentially lose the idea of the credibility 
that you've been building along the way. You know, make, uh, make things about the subject matter and not about the individuals, but make it about your stories. So you put your spin on it. So you are the expert, right? I just want to get that clear for you. Make it about you and the stories that you're telling, not about the other individuals that are on the program. Now, that's okay if you bring in a guest and you want them to share their stories as well, but make sure you don't get lost in it. That's what I'm telling you is really important. Now, I want to say as well that go back to a previous point is there is often more than meets the eye in a particular business. Don't be afraid to share it because that is what credibility building allows you to do, right? So as I said before, there are other areas in your business that are more than likely of interest to other people, but you haven't been able to share them in the past. Find the avenues in which to share those things because you have incredible learnings from the business that you have built along the way. And it's something that you need to stop and think about because it's your unique perspective as well that can continue to build your credibility. You want more than one topic to be able to talk about if you're going to put yourself out there and being known as the expert. You know, one of the interesting things that was said many years ago uh, when Google started first becoming a big thing was, you are who Google says you are. Well, I want to take that to a different level and say that it's actually not that anymore. It's, it's you are who you say you are, but you have to demonstrate that you have, uh, you have, first of all, your authentic, truthful self and relatable stories that demonstrate your expertise out there consistently. If you do that, then you are who you say you are and you will be the expert in your field. So I just want to say that again to you. And excuse me for reading a little note here. I'm going to be perfectly honest and say I'm looking down here at a note because I wrote this to myself so I don't forget because it's an important point that I want you to remember. You are who you say you are. If you put yourself out there with authentic, truthful insights and stories, you will be known as the expert in your field. So I just want to remind you that if you want to be known as an expert in your field, I strongly advise you to use the podcasting platform as a primary medium for yourself because it delivers so much more. It allows you to put content out from the podcast into multiple different platforms in multiple ways, many, many times over. It is just a no-brainer for businesses to stand out. There are very few podcasts compared to the amount of businesses and way more people listening all the time. So if you would like to be a guest on the BizBytes program, well, reach out to me because we only put certain people on there, but I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you and see if you might be suitable if you can give some professional ex- some professional level expertise across over to particularly professional services businesses in that B2B space, then that's someone who I want to talk with as a guest on the program. But if you want your own podcast, which I advise you to have, then see the show notes below for information about podcasts done for you. Let's have a conversation about designing a podcast that will suit you, take the least amount of time for you to do it, and guarantee that I make you the expert on the program. I hope you've got something out of this particular episode. Be known for your credibility. Uh, sorry, be known for your, um, uh, be known as the expert in your field. Build your credibility as part of it. Uh, that's what this has all been about. So I'd love to see you as the expert. Keep me informed as to what you're doing. Reach out, share some comments below. And of course, please do hit subscribe and share it with your friends. We'd love to have you back next time for the next episode of BizBytes. Hey, thanks for listening to BizBytes. We hope you enjoyed the program. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. BizBytes is proudly brought to you by Podcast Done For You, the service where we will deliver a podcast for you and expose your brilliance to the world. Contact us today for more information. Details in the show notes. We look forward to your company next time on BizBytes.